And with that, let's get started with lightning talk. So if you remember from yesterday, these are um, seven minute-ish um, presentations. And we are gonna get started with Rob Collins, who is here to talk about the Oklahoma Media Center. Come on up, sir. And the clicker is the top button and just kind of point it up there. All right. All right, hello. Uh, I'm Rob Collins, project manager with the Oklahoma Media Center, and after spending more than two decades as a journalist, I turned the page into the uh, nonprofit realm to help the industry I love in another way. So um, that's through a nonprofit that launched with the help of the local media association and from the Inasmuch Foundation, our initial funder in Oklahoma. OMC is a nonpartisan 501c3 that supports and strengthens local news by spurring innovation through collaboration um, that benefits diverse audiences. And we're statewide. We provide support through funding for news orgs. We do best practices training. And we also provide collaborative support. Shout out to any Okies in the house here. Uh, we have a diverse statewide collaborative, and it ranges really from nonprofit investigative to black and indigenous owned press. We have long standing publications working alongside startups and uh, broadcast media and student media and public radio. Now, we all know trust is near an all time low in media, and um, so we're engaging in this groundbreaking ecosystem project, uh, really trying to move the needle on news consumption habits. Um, this is a Gallup poll from September, and you'll see 34% of Americans trust media to report the news fair, fairly, fully, and accurately. And um, you all know every newsroom needs more resources, needs more financial support. So. Uh, this is a multi-phase project, and uh, you'll see that um, we're gonna have traditional scientific polling. Uh, we are also working with higher ed researchers collaboratively, and the Democracy Fund paid for our strategic planning, which recommended that we do this project as a group. So the ecosystem engagement project's goal is to find out where citizens get their local news why they believe or trust that information, and what it would take for them to financially support local news. We received a $40,000 grant from a local foundation, Kirkpatrick Foundation, and um, they specifically wanted to fund the scientific polling. So for phase one, we picked a reputable in-state pollster, and um, they're working collaboratively with university research professors at OU and Oklahoma State University. and. Um, we're giving them the data, working together so they can push forward now with hyperlocal listening. That first phase polling conducted a survey of 500 registered voters, and we really think this is an unprecedented project because we're designing it for local newsrooms, we have local pollsters working with local academics and researchers, and then we're gonna have trainers with local ties and funding projects I'll tell you about by local foundations. So we really think this project is scalable in other states in, in the country. Now, um, if we can do this ecosystem project in Oklahoma, which is arguably the reddest state, we really think it could be done anywhere. There's some good news uh, in the data. You'll see that uh, trust. The one thing that unites all Oklahoma journalists is uh, we're wanting to better understand the erosion of trust with audience. It's fascinating to me that nearly every socioeconomic group we polled, and that includes race, gender, religion, and political affiliation, all agreed on two areas to make them trust news more. 75% said transparency and prominently acknowledging mistakes would increase trust, and 56% said they would trust an outlet more if a friend recommended it. So at this time of really profound polarization in the country, everyone feels the same way about transparency and recommendations. It's also important to acknowledge kind of the, uh, how the uh, strong conception of local news correlates with age. 
this leads to kind of a question that has to be answered. Is it better to get those already consuming local news to move to pay, or is it better to bring new converts into consuming news? On building trust, the closer to home the media source is, the more trusted it becomes, and the less likely to be tied to any kind of partisanship or ideology um, through, the, through the lens of distrust. This polling would tell national media they need to address the ideological divide to improve trust, but that's not necessarily the case with local news. When a rating local media by its ideological balance, it's, it shows that really it's in the middle. Equal percentages think it's too conservative or too liberal, which I, I thought was really interesting. Now, um, what about paying for journalism? In our poll, 30% of the voters say they have made some kind of financial commitment to funding news during the year. About a quarter pay for a newspaper subscription. And uh, those under 45 are a bit more likely to have paid for at least something for journalism than those 45 to 64. So now we want to expand our understanding behind, beyond the snapshot of registered voters to get to the next phase. And we realize there are limitations with scientific polling. So in phase two, we're interested in understanding the why behind the data. We're currently merging the quantitative with the qualitative, and academic researchers are building on phase one with deep listening. OU and OSU researchers are dr drilling into rural news deserts and underreported metro areas. Um, academic researchers are consolidating, organizing, and cleaning data, and they're targeting four news deserts in Oklahoma, and then they're going to do broad sampling statewide and include focus groups in underreported urban areas. We're asking residents if they believe they're in a news desert, what local news they can get, and how they would support local news. And then after the collaborative researchers plan and execute those listening sessions and their focus groups and their strategic interviews, they're going to interpret their results and publish an academic analysis based on interviews by September 1. So this shows you kind of the timeline. Uh, moving into phase three, I know there are a lot, it's hard to keep track. Um, we're gonna have project execution with coaching through collaboration with another nonprofit. So after the academic analysis publishes, the nationally known Trusting News will interpret the findings and then construct kind of a comprehensive plan for all of our OMC news organizations. And Director Joy Mayer will be coming to Oklahoma to kick off training the week of September 18th to help us turn insights into action. That local training will include Joy's presentation and then we're gonna break into smaller groups and we really wanna allow some breakout time for everybody to process and learn what they're hearing together and we'll be sharing what we learn as well with everybody. Now for the final phase, in as much as supporting a $100,000 ecosystem engagement fund, it's really an opportunity for our collaborative news orgs to focus on trust with readers based on the findings from our local news ecosystem study. And the news orgs selected to receive stipends from OMC will participate in best practices training and also apply strategies based on scientific and academic research. Local media will work on these data inform projects with Joy and her veteran team um, with office hours. They'll provide one-on-one -on -one support uh, for this engagement fund program. And then the newsrooms will have until the end of Q1 of 24 to finish their projects. So we've been asked, what kind of projects are you doing? And that's really a great question because honestly, we don't know. Um, that's really what makes a project unique. We're letting the scientific and academic research literally inform our work. So we won't know what kind of projects we'll execute until we get the data in the fall, but we're really excited to learn what this research will discover. And we'll obviously share all of our findings with everyone. And um, I do wanna stress one thing. We really think that this can be applied in other statewide ecosystems, like it's scalable. So um, we already have a baseline 100,000 for this ecosystem engagement fund. And please note that we are trying to get more beyond the 100,000 to give out to the news orgs to distribute. So uh, thank you so much for letting me talk about our project.